A holon is something that is at once a part and a whole. Okay, does that make sense? So a leaf is a thing, it's a whole thing, right? But it's also, it could be part of a tree. Does that make sense? A piece of lettuce could be a whole thing, but it could also be in your salad. Does that make sense? Kind of get the idea here? Okay, so a piece of, a chair, that's a whole thing all by itself, but it could also be part of your living room set, right? Or you could have a color, and a color is a whole thing by itself, but it also could be part of a painting, right? Or a house could be part of a neighborhood. You guys getting the idea? A part and a whole. A whole on is something that is at once a part and a whole. Is anybody seeing something like an aha moment right now? Like this lady who's got this like light bulb going on on top of her head? Everything is a whole on, okay? So basically, the idea here, this little girl is herself, you know, all by herself. She's a thing. But she's also part of a family, and she's part of a school, and part of a soccer team, okay? And your hand is part of your body. Right? But it's all, it's a whole by itself. So when we talk about things, we need to remember that they can always be broken down into their smaller parts, and they can also be made into bigger parts. Does that make sense? Does that blow your mind? That's such a cool idea, right? So if we think about this, this is one of the ways that we've used Hellenic thinking to remind ourselves everything can be a part and a whole, all right? But reminding ourselves, how do you break this down into its smaller parts for easier understanding by the students? But then how do I bring it back into the whole and put it into context of bigger problem solving? That would be the bigger goal, okay, of how do we make meaning. So the idea around Hellenic thinking is that everything is a part and everything is a whole, all right? So if we use this, and if I, when I try to explain the brain to the students, right, you say, okay, yeah, you have a cool brain, you can talk about, you know, hemispheres, or we can talk about lobes, and we can break it down even further, and look at networks, or how synapses are formed, or how neurons exist, but the chemical, and then also the electrical exchanges, it goes smaller and smaller and smaller. But then we remind them that you can also go up bigger, right? Your brain is also inside of a kid. We're not just teaching brains on shoulders, you're teaching a whole person that lives in a community of other people whose learning is changed by other people. So we have to study learning within group contexts as well and also do international comparisons. So we try to bring it full circle from the very smallest to the very biggest pieces, okay? So with that in mind, oops, am I pushing the wrong thing? Here we go. Going back to this, let's look at a framework. If we have meaning making, there's at least three parts to this whole, at least three parts. One is mentalizing, one is social-emotional aspect, and one is context. 